Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Alex Smythe. Living with vision loss, I have spent years exploring the world around me without using a white cane. But as my vision gets worse, I felt it was time to learn this useful skill so that I am more comfortable navigating my environment. I reached out to Anita Laurinaitis from Balance for Blind Adults to give me a crash course in using a white cane. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to hold your cane. So typically you want to hold your cane as if you're reaching out to hold somebody's hand. Okay. So you're going to have your, your hand out like that. Yep. yep. Usually you're going to have So around, your, the, around the thumb and the index finger wrapped around. Wrapped around it, okay. yes. You're going to have that cane yep. at midline, so in the middle of your body. Sure. Um, yep. And you're going to flex it from your wrist back and forth. Okay. Okay. And you're going to cover the widest part of your body. Typically that's our shoulders. You're going to cover it. Uh, about an inch past each shoulder. Okay. And this is to make sure you're clearing your space in front of you. After a few instructions and a quick practice walk, we took to the sidewalks and trails on a beautifully sunny day. We started along a paved path where Anita explained the idea of shorelining. There's people who aren't always comfortable just traveling in open space. So what right. they do is kind of what you're doing now. You're touching the grass, yep. you're touching the sidewalk. So it's back and forth. Okay, that two-point um, touch, um, touching the sidewalk, touching the grass. Um, you're doing this to maintain your alignment so mm -hmm. you're not straying across, especially if it's like a busy bike path. Yes. Um, that would be a good idea to maybe use that so you're not straying across into the oncoming traffic. Yeah, so I'm not just drifting over and who knows, there could be a cyclist coming behind me. They think I'm going to be staying this side. Exactly. Unbeknownst to them, unbeknownst to me, I, I drift over. Yeah, and what I've always done typically for myself is when navigating, is I kind of find other people and I follow them in their path because then I know, oh, that path is clear because that person went through it. Yes. And so that's kind of always been my, I guess, coping mechanism for lack of a better word. And so I guess incorporating that too, because I can still do what I'm, I'm used to doing, but I can now incorporate the cane. I can make sure there's nothing at my feet when I'm not seeing it yes. and go from there. Exactly. Learning on paved pathways is great, but what about when the path ends? We're at a, at a curb, there's a road in front of us, but there's no sidewalk beside us on this side or the other side. So what do we do in that situation? So in this situation, we're gonna do what we call country travel and we're okay. gonna keep closest to, um, we're gonna face the oncoming traffic. Sure. So if we're heading, I guess, south, we're heading back south, I guess. We're gonna face the northbound traffic yep. and we're gonna keep close to the curb. So again, we're gonna do the same thing how you were doing before. You're gonna shoreline the curb. Sure. So touch the curb, touch the road, yep. making sure you keep that curb um, in contact all the time. That way you don't lose um, and stray into the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. And because I'm hitting the curb, I get the feedback that, oh, there's some, a barrier here on the side, so that's where I know I need to be close to here. Exactly. Gotcha. Nothing is consistent, unfortunately, <laughs> in the city. The world is not designed for blind people, so we're, we're managing our way through it. Exactly. Yeah. We continued to explore and manage the outdoor spaces and it got more comfortable using my cane. But Anita had one final obstacle she wanted me to conquer. So Anita, we're now indoors. There's a bit of the echo. So we're, you're gonna teach me a bit about indoor stairs and yes. kind of some of the challenges of navigating flights of stairs opposed to a few steps. Okay, sure. So when we come up to the stairs, um, you're gonna be walking as usual, and then you're gonna feel perhaps um, a barrier or something kind of stopping you from walking, but you also may have been looking for the stairs too. So touching those bottom of the stairs is like, great, this is where I wanna be. So you're gonna put your cane vertical, you're okay. gonna walk right up to the steps, you're gonna have yeah. your toes kind of at the bottom of that step so you know where you are. You're gonna lift your cane up to see how high that is, and then mm -hmm. and touch the back of the next step. Exactly. Okay. So now you understand the width of the step, right? Right. And then I know, okay, I can put my foot there. Yes. And then you okay. also want to keep this cane about a step or two in front and always oh, kind okay. of hovering. So always touching that. That way it taps, taps, taps as you go up. Descending the stairs was the same process. Extending the cane to find the step before proceeding and repeating until you reach the bottom. I thoroughly enjoyed my lesson with Anita. I learned a ton and now I feel more confident using my cane to get around both indoors and outdoors.